Well, uh, Ryan, thank you for helping me with my project to interview 1,840 people before the end of 2024, whenever NASA is planning to land people on the moon. I, I thought maybe, uh, could you um, say a little bit about yourself? Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Ryan Joseph. I'm a, uh, I'm currently, it's obviously summertime right now, but I'm a junior going to my senior year of uh, high school. Uh, I'm 17 years old and uh, yeah, I'm mostly interested in like computer science and all that, but generally, yeah, I, I also have an interest in space and uh, space technologies in general. Yeah. That's interesting. My uh, younger son is also 17 and he's a, a junior. He's going into a senior year uh, this year. So it's kind of uh, interesting. Um, well, uh, did you know that NASA is planning to send people to the moon in 2024? Uh, I wasn't aware, but I believe like I've heard of it before. I feel like I've heard of uh, uh, murmurs that, oh yeah, they're planning on sending people to the moon. I don't think I remember hearing about the specific date, but yeah, I knew they were going to the moon again, yes. Is it, uh, I mean, 2024, you'll be a junior in college and yeah. you know, there will actually be people again on the moon in college. Uh, does that excite you? Slightly, yeah, that's interesting because that, uh, well, that leads to a whole new uh, aspect of space exploration. Yeah, it leads us to a new area of like, you know, it allows us to, you know, look towards the future and have something, okay, that's something cool. And we have physical proof that, hey, uh, we are in space again. Instead, so, uh, we have like, a, there's a very human experience to the fact that uh, seeing people in space again, uh, on the moon again, especially during this day, it's like, you know, it, we're back. It's, it's, it's an exciting feeling of we're back on the moon and we're about to start our whole journey towards further beyond. Now, most of the people I've talked to out of like the 201 people, I would say about 40 of them knew we were going and the other 161 did not. I, I was wondering, uh, what would it take to reach more people? I mean, like what, what needs to be done that's not being done? Well, I guess right now it's just because right now it's like, it's so, well, it's not that far off, but you know, so a while is away. Uh, I think right now they're obviously not talking about as much. There's not much uh, news going around because, you know, it's just in its early, it's its early stages right now. But I feel like as the days come on and as we get closer and closer, we'll see a lot more, you know, we'll see a lot more government officials and uh, uh, news talking about, you know, our, uh, encroaching space for uh, you know like being our build up to going to space uh so i think right now obviously not that many people would know about it but as we get closer and closer and closer to the actual launch date of course we're going to see more people know, know more about it because it's going to be in the news because the government because it's you know it's nasa the government one the u.s government wants us to know hey we're going back to the moon it's such a big deal so i think Honestly, it'll be like a lot more news stories about, you know, how is this being made or, you know, hyping it up, you know, like, oh, we're going to like the, uh, you know, news is going to go, how, how's it made? Who are the people who's going to the moon? Uh, like, how's this rock ship? Like, what's their plan? We're going to see more news stories about that as we get closer. But also, we're going to see the government try to, you know, uh, put, like, like, you know, try to uh, present, hey, the U.S. is going back to the moon, uh, you know. We're going to see a lot more events. We're going to see a lot more press conferences. We're going to see more information presented by the government themselves saying, hey, we're going to the moon again. And we're going to see this, that, you know, people become more and more aware of it. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, because I think, you know, recently SpaceX launched those two astronauts into space. And I, I feel like a lot of people know about that just because it was like recent event. Um, did you see that? Yes, yes, I did see that. And I think also because of that, it's because, well, since it's such a uh, revolution merit for um, uh, the U.S. to go back, like to be back in this place fight for over like a decade or so, well, around a decade-ish uh, uh, break between us going back into space with American-made spaceships, uh, that's going to, it's like the whole idea is that the government and the people in the news are like, hey, we're doing something new that, or we're doing something that we haven't done in years. And I think it's going to be a bigger deal with Moon because we haven't done that for decades, like nearly what like, uh, nearly half a de more than half a decade essentially we're doing and it's only right now we're going back into the moon so we're going to see since it's such a revolutionary step in space uh space exploration again i'd say we're going to see that increasing uh we're going to see increasing amounts of notoriety about this event so similarly to the spacex revolution in america going back to space 
same thing, same thing here again. Uh, Americans go back to the moon. So same idea. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I feel like the 2020s is going to be for space, like what the 1990s was for the internet. Um, yeah. You know, a chance, uh, you know, a, a decade of really, uh, uh, you know, significant development in space. And I was kind of curious in, in terms of whenever you look out at the future, uh, do you see yourself um, uh, traveling and, and living in space or your children living in space? I mean, like, well, what does the future look like from your, your most optimistic standpoint? Honestly, I don't know, but I guess uh, maybe because realistically, I don't think within my lifetime or within my uh, like uh, capable lifetime, because, you know, you may get too old for that. I'd say there's a good chance that, you know, I may not go to space myself because by the time it's available for the public at a, you know, reasonable option, or it is, you know, like a feasible option for citizens to move to outer space, uh, by that time I'd be too old. But I do see, let's say, my grandchildren or my future future generations of any American uh, or any citizen in the world to be going to space because that's the goal to expand our human empire of sorts. Yeah, um, but I mean, like, if you look out 500 years from now, do you think there are settlements on, like, the moon and Mars and the moons of Jupiter and the moons of Saturn, or, or do you think we're largely still on Earth and maybe just taking, like, little quick trips places like we, we've done in the past? Uh, honestly, let's say, if we say five, let's say, I could probably split up into, like, 500 years. So let's say the first century is... Uh, like as you mentioned about like the 90s being a boom for uh, internet, I actually say that's 2030s most likely because this 2020s are going to feel like the uh, is like the uh, 1980s for internet, like the very basis, like it's just starting. But I'd say the uh, 2030s, maybe the 2040s would be when we're actually seeing uh, large groups of people going to the moon or uh, going to Mars. Uh, I'd say like yeah, the moon mostly. The Mars is probably in its first uh, first team in reaching Mars in 2030, but like the, those similar ideas uh, in that area. But I'd say as we go into the future, let's say the first uh, 100 years, we're gonna see space, uh, you know, mostly scientists and such, and maybe at the very end, citizens and normal people trying to, you know, you know expand saying, oh, what can we do in space? What can we learn from space? Uh, the next two centuries, maybe three, we're gonna see uh, more and more people, you know, just uh, the more richer people, maybe the more who can actually uh, afford it, or maybe those who, uh, like, yeah, the high, the more elite people would start moving out, moving into space, or we'll see businesses try to have uh, people, uh, move people to space to learn about things, to make a profit in that case. Uh, but, and the last, let's say 500, maybe not 500, but let's say like, maybe like 800 years or so, I maybe even see, uh, I'd say by then, we'd see uh, the expanse of civilization across the solar system let's say because i'd say every century or so like by the end of this century we'll probably see uh in the more habitable planets we'll be seeing uh uh, uh like a good amount of people there but within the next century we'll see more and more people come in and more exploration outwards that sounds uh like an amazing uh, vision do you, do you think uh, we'll actually figure out the way to actually send people to a different star system at some point? Or are we pretty much contained to our own solar system? Well, I'd say most likely, yeah, at some point, but that's way into the future, maybe a millennia from now, most likely. Because uh, I'd say uh, if we do reach out farther and farther into our solar system, I'd say within a millennia, we could probably see a way to go outside of our solar system. Uh, it's beyond before beyond where we will live beyond where will uh our children will live and so on and so forth but consider let's say the how like we have the earth has a lifespan of like what a couple million years or so i'd still say you know we have a long time before the earth actually you know it uh, sun absorbs the earth right so that idea is we have so much more time to actually spread out further so within that amount of time i'd say in a thousand millennia, we'll see uh, we'll see the expression of the solar system. But within the next millennia or the next one after that, we'll see beyond beyond our own solar system, beyond our even our Milky Way, maybe. That that would be uh, amazing. But 
you know, um, aside from the sun kind of using up all its fuel and expanding out and consuming the, the earth, uh, we have a couple of narrow term th threats that are a little bit more difficult to uh, predict. Um, like for example, asteroid impact or meteor impact is always uh, potentially a risk. Solar flares uh, that in, you know, kind of disrupt life uh, here is a risk. Um, what do you think about, I mean, how do we protect ourselves against those types of things? Well, let's, let's, uh, let's see what the, Asteroid belts, that may be a little more complicated, uh, so that may be beyond, you know, my knowledge by any cases, but I'd say, but so uh, with the solar flares and all that stuff, it, honestly, uh, as our, because uh, it just uh, would disrupt our technology for a while, but I don't see it uh, being a tear, like a destruction of it. Multiple solar flares could be uh, disruptive, but since most of our technology can be, you know, uh, stored under place or we can have anti certain protection against like solar flares, it's not that uh, if one single solar flare passes through Earth, it should not be that uh, it should not be that harmful. I'd say within a couple of years, it will be like a couple of years of dark uh, well, darkness, as in so uh, in, uh, informational darkness between technologies. So we won't be back to our normal speed. But I'd say within a decade, maybe within a decade or two, we would see back up to normal because humans are resilient and we want to get back to where we were most likely. But with asteroids and such, that may be a little more complicated. That may be, uh, uh, there's always obviously uh, predictions and seeing, you know, uh, we will see from way of, a while before we can see, okay, where is this coming? Where is this, uh, how long will it take to hit us? How can we avoid it? Uh, usually we're, see, we're given years in advance, maybe uh, if it's only big enough to uh, create a large, massive, you know, extinction event we will see that uh, we'll have time to experience and understand, okay, what can we do to stop that? So within, I'd say within that time, if there is a life-threatening thing and we're given that much time, I don't doubt for a fact we'll see a way of preventing it because that is top priority number one. Right, uh, yeah, I mean, but you, I mean, the first step is actually seeing it with enough um, ahead of time and then having the capability to actually do something about it. Uh, you know, I think both of those are kind of questionable right now in terms of what the capabilities we have today, uh, yeah. both detecting it and uh, doing something about it. Um, so the other thing is energy production. You know, our rate of energy utilization on the earth has been increasing exponentially. And at some point, um, even if, um, at some point we're gonna run out of the capability of growing at the same rate. And some people are thinking that maybe space-based solar power would be a way to kind of uh, generate uh, electricity uh, without limits and then beam it back to Earth. I was wondering what you thought about that idea. Yeah, uh, if I'm to be clear, um, is that the, uh, if I'm, I don't know, what I is it the Dyson? Uh, is that the, like the Dyson sphere idea where we take the, uh, where a compass is essentially a star and uh, we have, we essentially uh, compass a star within uh, uh, like solar panels or uh, energy reflective where it could send like, powerful energy into a converter that allows us to use it. Yeah, dives, um, that may be taking a long time. And theoretically, if we can, and come, we can, uh, you know, use the sun as like literally use the sun itself as a power source, then yeah, of course, if we can figure that out, that'll uh, help us out. But uh, honestly, as it's seeming to come, uh, we're going to see a lot right within the next couple of what, decades, maybe the next couple of decades, within the next century or so, we're going to see a reduction of uh, 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 fossil fuels. So we're going to see, uh, uh, we're gonna see uh, many places drying up their fossil fuel resources. And of course, we'll find some new ones. But once those are gone, we're going to see more and more uh, losing fossil fuels. And that could lead to uh, more human props, such as resource wars and uh, uh, countries going bankrupt due to, let's say, uh, due to their reliance on oil and such. So now there's, of course, a search for uh, renewable energies, re search for uh, stuff, uh, you know, stuff that can help us, you know, avoid such an impact. So, but of course, since we're growing exponentially, our you said, um, energy is exponential. Uh, we need something that's greater than what we already have today. We need something that could uh, rely on that. So core, uh, we need to figure out something that does most likely, as you're saying, like use space-based uh, solar energy or something similar to that. So the idea that we can find something that's 
not uh, encompassed by our Earth's limitations, I guess you could say. Anything that's uh, anything that's above outside of Earth's, uh, you know, outside of Earth's limitations. Anything that's above Earth's uh, limitations, so that you know, there's something. There's a chance that uh, if anything goes wrong there, it doesn't affect Earth, or we don't we don't have anything. Nothing that Earth call like you know any problems that Earth has, it can't influence our energy production, so that you know people can still live and thrive. Yeah, uh, it's definitely, definitely a lot of uh, potential there. I, I was wondering, have you heard of uh, Elon Musk and uh, SpaceX? Yes, yes, I definitely have heard things. And uh, uh, like anything comes to mind, like uh, what, what is some news that maybe you rem you've heard about them recently? I mean, of course, the whole, you know, they've launched recently a spaceship into uh uh, SpaceX themselves have recently launched a spaceship into, uh, you know, to the ISS and uh, successfully restarted the Ameri uh, Americans going back to space with American spaceships on American land. So, of course, that's the big thing with SpaceX. And, you know, Elon Musk is a very, uh, very famous billionaire. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, he's very, they're very well known. They're a very well known company. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, uh, one thing that they're doing right now is deploying thousands of satellites in low Earth orbit that will provide high speed internet to every point on the earth. Uh, it's called yeah. a Starlink. I was wondering yes. if you had heard about that. Uh, well, yeah, Starlink is of course uh, an amazing project. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's looking, it's trying to spread internet, and give uh, free internet to many who don't have it. There's obviously some uh, worries because uh, you know, launching so many satellites would cause, you know, possible space crash and all that stuff. And there is the worry that the idea of, um, like, the idea itself is not bad. It's not, I, it's completely well-intentioned. I don't doubt that. But, you know, there's now people worrying, is there a possibility of it's the idea of uh, do things, break things first, fix them later sort of idea that is famous within Silicon Valley, I, you know, Silicon Valley ideal. It's now there's that worrisome idea that is this uh, hurting that so, of course, yeah. But generally, the idea itself, I am for. I'm just worried about, you know, the later consequences because uh, if this ends up hurting us in the end. But if they if they can find a way to make where it has the least impact and can safely allow, you know, reduce the amount of space trash there is and help avoid any prom uh, any help any problems that cause, you know, disruptions of sad other satellites and such. And it can help provide free internet to, uh, not, well, you know, not free, but, you know, open internet, high-speed internet to those who don't access to that. That can help a connector world together. That can help a lot. That can help the world, you know, become a closer, less, I guess, smaller place in a sense, socially. It can be a smaller, uh, smaller world. Yeah, indeed. Um, it's hard to control uh, access to information if everybody can just put a little dish outside their house and be connected to the rest of the world. Yeah. Uh, so if it was safe and affordable, would you have an interest in going into space? Well, of course, yeah, if it's safe and affordable. I mean, that's the idea with any uh, transit, with uh, planes, cars, and all that. Uh, people are willing to, uh, people are really willing to, uh, you know, like people like me, the common citizen, would only be willing to do something if it's safe and affordable. And even so, we still see people who are scared of flights because they're worried about crash because you know, although there is a very, very low risk of uh, plane crashes compared to car crashes, we are so scared because of it's such a large, because it's such a huge thing. It's such a, like, it's a rare, it's so rare it happens. Uh, so it's so rare that it happens that it's, uh, it becomes big news while a car crash, you know, it's so, uh, it's so many times happening every day that it's such small news. So that idea that if it's safe and affordable, me personally, I'd say yes. I'm absolutely uh, if it's safe and affordable, I'll be very interested because it's a life change. It's a I say a life change experience, but a very life uh, for once a lifetime experience. Uh, but for the general public, that may be a uh, you know there'll be a learning there'll be a learning curve. There'll be a trust that needs to be gained because of course you know people are still uh, you know untrustful of you know space in general. Like you know are they is it, are they safe? Are they you know uh, completely safe. So, me personally, absolutely. But of course, the public depends on how they trust the company or how they trust the flight itself. Yeah. And um, how far would you go? Would it be like just a suborbital flight where you just go up above the Earth's atmosphere 
you get to see the blackness of space and the curvature of the earth or would you spend like a, a week in orbit on like a space station or maybe a couple week trip to the moon or maybe a multi-year trip to mars and back like how far would you venture if you could well depends on the situation right so let's say uh always depends so let's uh let's say uh all of them are completely safe and completely inexpensive and they have no, they have very low risk and you could still, uh, let's say you could still, con let's say with Mars, multi-year, right? You still have full contact, you have, it's almost as if you were moving to a different country or you're, uh, or you're on a thing. Yeah, sure. With uh, uh, like right now, personally, um, I would be only fine with, let's say maybe a, a few week trip to Mars or, you know, uh, or maybe like a, you know, a, a few days, uh, a week long trip to like the orbit, right? Because that's my expectation. That's what I expect because I have a corollary experience to that. Like I, you know, whenever I go to meet my family in uh, India and all, right, I have a experience that, okay, I'm gone for a month or two and I can, you know, I understand that experience, right? How I'm away from my family, how I'm away from my friends, away from my home. And I get back and I have like, you know, that feels reasonable to me. But the idea of, okay, I'm going for years and I'm going to be gone for like years to go and years to come back. It's such a long time to me that uh, as a trip, it seems unreasonable. But of course, in the future, you know, uh, our opinions change. People, our thoughts and our ideals and our, you know, what we believe in changes, of course. So let's uh if let's say if i were to you know have trust in the idea that okay this little years long trip will seem something like you know it's not that big of a deal i won't miss much at when i'm home and i'll be back soon enough anyway i'll be fine but the idea that i'm losing years of my life right like right now the idea i'm losing years of my life that makes me hesitant to go for a years long journey months it's fine because i you know I've, I've been away from my home for months, but for years, for and years, to, you know, missing the chance of my home idea like that, it's kind of, it, you know, it's kind of iffy to me. So that's my idea. Well, uh, was there any topic that we didn't get to talk about that you wanted to? No, I mean, yeah, if there's anything you want to talk about, it's absolutely, I'm, I'm open to any questions. Anything is fine. Well, um, did you know that... Um, Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, has a space company? Yes, uh, of course. There's the, uh, uh, as finally enough, there's, uh, you know, there's Jeff, uh, there's Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, uh, uh, Richard Branson. Uh, these three are the most famous, of course. They're known for their, uh, they're like billionaires looking for their, uh, their uh, you know, their own space race of sorts. Uh, they're trying to uh, try to beat beat the ones you know to go to space uh, it's, it's instead of our between countries it's between individual people and although personally as a uh, as my beliefs i don't really like the idea of you know billionaires and all that stuff you know using this as just ways to earn more money as ways because of course i don't i don't doubt for a fact that these people have the idea that they want to make a new area a new way to uh, a new exploration. These people, I, I believe that they completely believe in the exploration of space, but I still feel like, uh, you know, I still don't like the idea that it may be, you know, turn into a uh, profit over uh, people idea. Like it may be right now, maybe because they will explore space, but later on, maybe turn to profit. But overall, I think right now it's leading to the advancement of humankind really. Cause, uh, in some ways, they have it better than governments do because governments have bureaucracy while these people have themselves to claim. And although that may be bad in some later way, right now, it's off, It's awesome. It just creates, allows us to see into the future, see hope into the future, essentially. Uh, but yeah, of course, these three are having their own space race and it, leads, it currently leads to the betterment of all right now. And uh, do you have any plans to go into like the space industry in terms of later in your career? Like, what are you thinking about? Maybe uh, right now, of course, I'm right. Uh, I'm, you know, it's like my colleges and all that right now, but uh, I'm looking at computer science. And of course that field directly leads into space technology that leads into many industries. And I also have a passenger space. I am very interested in, uh, uh, very interested in, you know, what, uh, you know, the exploration of space and all that. So I could see my computer science field helping advance humankind in the space race uh, in our, well, 
yeah, a, a space, a race against time, I guess, in this case. So, yeah, uh, I'm very much interested in, yeah, if there's an opportunity, I might take it. So I might see myself working for one of these companies or maybe NASA themselves to help further uh, humanity, I guess. And um, when do you think we'll actually start seeing stuff like uh, space mining and mining on the moon and manufacturing in space, that type of thing? I'd say as soon as uh, we can see uh, people, we can see like individuals, like not just scientists, but individuals, uh, uh, individual citizens move on to the moon or move on to a land, then we'll see uh, businesses thrive and we'll see companies uh, try doing space mining and stuff. Uh, now there of course is a, uh, uh, the unfortunate fact is probably before, uh, before any, since it's, you know, it's space, you can't really regulate space. Before that, we're going to see some shady stuff going on. But I just think as soon as uh, people can actually live on there and, you know, or earn money, uh, they can, like, actually, you know, grow and live and thrive, then we'll see space mining because that allows people to stay there, eh? Allows people to live there and actually, you know, look into that you know they can look over you know it's it's all be robots by then like all this mining stuff's gonna be robots so we see uh people you know looking over uh you know focusing on that stuff so they can actually live there and not worry about coming back and forth about space mining so i'd say honestly I'd say as soon as people can actually live on the moon and they can actually you know uh they can actually just uh live and thrive there then we can see businesses come in and i mean yeah, businesses come in and actually do space mining. I mean, will there be earlier tries? Of course, because since we're seeing, you know, robotics and satellites, we can see earlier cases where we can see, uh, you know, just robots mining. But honestly, I think there's still a human element. We still need, uh, no matter what uh, we have technology is, the closer we have a human to a robot or a human to a, uh, a site there, they it makes it easier for the uh, company because they can rely on that person to control everything instead of relying on a person down on earth to, uh, you know, real, uh, control a robot uh, thousands of miles away from the earth. So it's easier for them, makes, makes it more profitable, makes it more easy for them. And that's when we see not only space money, but space business essentially. Well, I mean, one thing uh, I was just looking at today, there's like a mission that NASA is working on to actually send a probe to, a metallic asteroid in the asteroid belt called Psyche. And uh, I was looking at the, the time frame for that mission. They plan to launch it in 2022, but it actually won't arrive at the asteroid until 2026. Oh, okay. so, so um, you know, one thing about robots is, uh, you know, you were talking about missing several years of your life and how that, that would be a problem. I mean, the great thing about the, the robots is you can send them out and it takes four years to get there. And then you have those people doing other things, and whenever it finally gets there, then then they can can uh, start doing work. Of course, but they, uh, what I was trying to say in that idea was that's a human aspect. Uh, but with work and all that stuff, not for leisure, but for work in general, honestly, I'd see that uh, where that's really that's really the very either the most those companies looking for advancement of science, not not just companies, but like you know, organizations that look for advancement of science like NASA or even SpaceX and such, they're actually looking for science, not just to, you know, find energy or such and such. They're actually looking for some, something science. We're going to see those people push first. They're going to be the people who push to see, can we live on the moon? Can we, uh, can we mine in space? Can we do that stuff like this, uh, similar stuff like that? They're going to be the first people to be going to space and mining and all that. But of course, they're saying, you know, I'd say what I'm saying is like, you know, people living on that business, working on that, I'd say that's later, like maybe two, three decades later. But as you're saying at NASA, yeah, it makes it easier for these companies because they can send robots, not humans. For now, that works great for them. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like you can send the robots ahead of time to do all the mining, the manufacturing, the making of the habitat. And it's all like set up and the humans just come. That might be... Uh... That might be a good. That might be happening. That's great. Unless that could happen, uh, but yeah, that's mostly most of those who are doing it are not going to be your uh, I don't know your AT and Ts or whatever, uh, your uh, 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 
uh, Shell or H, uh, B, BP. It's going to mostly going to be your NASA's, your SpaceX's, your uh, Blue Origins, your Virgin Galactics, such on, uh, so on and so forth. People who are really interested in space and really looking forward to the advancement of science, not really corporations looking for, uh, you know, places to find alternate uh, profits, which is fine. It's just the fact that we're not going to see that until late, uh, until we actually see it's profitable, either A, or people can actually work closer to it, or B, uh, it's faster communications of such. So, yeah, but absolutely, there's a good chance that by the time of, uh, you know, by the time we're there, it's all set up and we just start our life. Yeah, you know, you touch on something that I, I think is a very good point. Like, if you look at Blue Origin or SpaceX, they're, they're – mission is driven by actually getting humanity into space but then if you look at a company like one of these uh, aerospace contractors you know their mission is to make a profit next quarter and whether or not that is getting into space or not in fact it'd be better for them not to have to launch anything because uh, it might explode or, or what have you and yeah. um, you know you kind of see a difference in and motivation between these companies and philosophies, yeah, of course. Um, that's the uh, that was what I was worried about earlier. Like uh, your your Elon Musk and your uh, Jeff Bezos, right now they're completely they have no need because they have their Teslas, they have their Amazons, they have their Virgin Airlines, their Virgin what are their entire brand of Virgin products. But uh, core uh, later on, well, maybe not them because by the time space is actually you know profitable, they'll be old. They'll be, they don't need this money. But it's really for those who let's say like you know your uh, Boeing's or your Lockheed Martin's, where by then when they're uh, as you're saying, they don't necessarily need to uh, go out. The longer, longer they, the more and more money they can make. They're profit. They're profit focused. Uh, and as soon as these guys get to space, we're gonna see uh, we're gonna see a heavy. Uh, we're going to see a heavy increase of business and a heavy increase of uh, privatiza uh, privatization and uh, less, uh, less and less focus in science, which hopefully leads to, uh, best case scenario, it leads to essentially no life, just leads to normal living life. Your common society will live there because as much as SpaceX and as much as uh, Blue Origin really wants to go out in space, their goal is not to really have people live there. Their people is to explore and reach the cosmos, which is a lot better uh, about these Boeings and Lockheed Martins is people to get there and live. That's not really, their goal is to explore, it's to live. They're, that's all left to NASA, but their job is to get people to there and live, that's it. So when these companies finally get to space, we're gonna see society grow, I'd say. Yeah, and you know, a lot of it has to do with, we have Elon and, and Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson and, and probably hundreds of other people, but society as a whole, I think really thinks it's inconceivable of us going beyond earth. You know, like that's really hard for like 99% of the people to really think about. And what do you think it would take to kind of get them inspired about it? Uh, well, in that case, it's really, uh, it's <laughs> yeah, you're more, uh, it's, uh, but honestly, it's really just people going to space. If people can, ex if people literally see science, like imagine this: we didn't imagine people staying up on the International Space Station for years before yes. we went to the moon, right? We didn't imagine people going to the moon uh, a century back. We couldn't imagine that. The idea is, it's these scientists, it's these engineers, it's these teachers, it's these. People who are going there for the love of science, going up there, their inspiration to us. It's not really, uh, it's not these people who are, it's not your Lockheed Martins or your Boeings. It's really the people who are going there who really care about science, who care about space, that inspire the rest. Uh, the people who just want to go there because it's because it's profitable or it's because that's just the next area, they don't inspire. They're focused on themselves while, you know, Let's take, for example, Elon Musk. Uh, as much as he is a controversial figure, his uh, love for science is very apparent in the public mind. People know that he, he owns SpaceX and he, he talks about SpaceX all the time. Uh, if people like him who are passionate about, uh, about science, are passionate about the future, 
is what inspires everyone else to look beyond. And once we actually see people in a place that we thought was impossible, people living on the moon, something that we thought impossible, if we see people on there, we can then see, okay, this is happening. We can see people going beyond. So once the barrier is broken, then we can see people going beyond. Yeah, it's about um, once, once people see it, they believe in it. Once they believe in it, it happens more frequently and goes deeper. It's a very good cycle. Point. Yeah, it's a cycle. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate your time. And thank you so much for talking to me. No, no, no problem. Thank you for having me. Emma. Yeah. And if you know anybody else I can interview, let me know because I got 1,638 more to do. <laughs> yeah, you got a while away. But yeah, uh, uh, good luck with that. Uh, and of course, I'll see if there's anyone else who could, it was interested to talk to you. Sorry if it was on like a real rambling bit, but you know, I'm not, not really a good uh, podcaster, I guess, in this sense. No, it was perfect. Uh, no trouble. Yeah. Uh, well, you have a good rest of your day then. And you too. Good luck on your project. And to the, uh, I guess, this is for the future. To those looking from the future, uh, look, look towards the future itself and see that what we have believed in, what we see, uh, imagine what, imagine the impossible and uh, try for it. Strive for the future. See ya. Thank you.